diagnosis is the one of the important tests to determine healthy embryos without anomaly or any kind of aneuploidy. We have a two way to determine healthy embryos by pre-implantation genetic diagnosis. First way, PGD5 chromosome with FISH testing, which we are able to determine five chromosomes which are responsible from the implantation and the common disease like Kronefelter syndrome, Down syndrome, trisomy, etc. Uh, there are second way to determine healthy embryos by uh, next generation sequencing (NGS), which we are able to check full chromosomes. By the both tests, uh, we are able to get healthy embryos by the different genetic consent before embryo transfer. By next generation sequencing, mostly we are using trafectodem cells with the five to six cells which we are receiving five day on the blastocyst stage. For regular PGD5 chromosome testing, on the third day of embryo development, we are receiving one blastomer which we are able to check chromosomal development by the FISH technique. Now I will try to show how we are getting a biopsy technique and I have to say biopsy technique doesn't have any kind of uh, harmful damage to embryos during the biopsy. So of course this can be depends of the experience of the embryologist, uh, quality standards and of course uh, protocols which we are using in the embryology laboratory. Basically, on the blastocyst stage, we have trafectoderm cells which create placenta and we have ICM which carry up all DNA genetic material of the parents which create the baby. So, we don't touch during the biopsy, trafectoderm biopsy to fetus which create the ICM. Like, uh, we only get uh, biopsy cells through trafectoderm which create a placenta and it is not harmful for the embryos. Here is the tricky point to don't give damage to ICN which carry up the genetic material here. So we are trying to be far away during the biopsy because we are using laser technology to be keep away from the uh, ICN cells and to don't give damage to genetic material. We only receive 3 to 5 cells to trophectoderm and trophectoderm is growing so fast which can cover these cells in a short time. As you see on the video, there's holding pipette which we are trying to keep blastocyst and which is biopsy pipette which we will make the biopsy. So as well, I'm calling the trophectoderm cells around of the blastocyst which is totally hatched blastocyst and ICM cell which are keeping the genetic material and the fetus part. So holding pipette, we are trying to catch on the position which ICM will be far away than biopsy pipette. Then biopsy pipette is closer and we try to open our laser active. And then with the high zoom of the objective, we try to catch carefully our material and we are trying to calculate four or five cells from the traffic to them part and which we are far away from the ICM part, we just get several laser shots. And then we are able to get biopsy cells here and we'll show the healthy embryos after the biopsy. So still biopsy cells is clear, our embryos are totally clear here we don't have any damage to ICM part and we don't have any damage to trafectoderm part mostly there are before the freezing in 10 to 15 minutes this blastocyst will be will became expanded and the best position before the freezing so we are able to freeze embryos to be ready for next cycles so there are two ways for the freezing of the Blastocyst after the biopsy, first way is as a collapsed embryo to freeze uh, quickly and second way as expanded blastocyst to freeze. So both techniques give high quality of results, depends of different articles and publications shows mostly that similar result 
uh, while we are freezing expanded or collapsed blastocysts. Only freezing technique, vitrification process, is the difference between collapse and expanded blastocysts. Mainly, as you see, blastocyst techniques are totally safe for patient, and we suggest uh, to all the patient, uh, we recommend it highly to use before embryo transfer, NGS or PGD testing to get a healthy embryos.